that is probably how I was trained like 35 years back, uh, but this thing has diminished now. So a master apprentice will, will look after everything. It will look after your skills, your knowledge, and your behavior. Dante Parti thi, probably Jisran Talat ko Parti hongi Khwaja sahab se, once in a while, thik hai, and they would correct us. They would not only just uh, uh, teach us the art of surgery, they would teach us the art of living, how to behave, what is a professional, this, all these things, honesty, ethics, and everything. So, but this thing couldn't uh, sustain itself uh, over the turn of century because many things came up. Competency-based education. So, uh, uh, competencies were defined, a set of competencies, which are a mixture of, and everyone was obsessed with, the whole paradigm changed. Now, instead of the processes, now everyone was fixated with the outcome. Can he do this? Can he do this? Can he do this? So, we were like coming, becoming like smart cars, how fast a zero to 60, or everything like that. And then, the trainees, the number of trainees increased tremendously and there was team-based learning, practitioner, new roles, uh, guys like we came over and they said this is not the way to teach, this is a better way to teach, learning theories, the neuroscience came in and requirements of the professional organizations like CANMEDS, ACGME and PMC, PMDC, whichever is alive at that moment of time. And then another thing happened, the context for learning, we would stay additional nights, you would never do it just to see an appendix, just to see an, another laparotomy and we were not on call, not on duty, but we would stay and watch and wait for that procedure. Um, <clears throat> and there is, now there are more settings, you don't need an operation theatre to learn the basic surgical skills and skill centers were developed and there was increased range of simulators and not only the increased range of simulators, there were technological advancements. So then came laparoscopic surgery, minimal invasive. It had its own challenges, very useful, but it has this because it requires a larger number of residents and trainers. And and then they have to attain and maintain their proficiency. So they need somewhere to go and practice. And then finally, now we are in the age of virtual reality and robotics. So uh, we'll, this is a little background. There's another little background which I want you to uh, bring to you. These are the basic ones. Professor Amar said those, those four pillars. In medical education in general, we have these three pillars. The cognition, the knowledge, we are so obsessed with. And then the physical thing, the performance, the skill. And somewhere in the, when we gave up the apprenticeship model, somewhere we lost this one, the behavior, behavioral aspect. Van der Luten says, in any assessment, of course, we need reliability, validity, but we should care about the impact it is having. And then its cost. This will come when I talk about virtual reality. And then acceptability. And then another thing, objectivity. And the timing of assessment. When we were there, we knew, are we going to get uh, this part two examination? Uh, in four years, so we would do so many things. One exam would decide this or this. And we would do it. 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 We We talk about assessments, there were two types of assessments. Summative, that life-threatening experience at the end of any course. Uh, now we are, my talk would be more on this aspect, formative, because the whole idea is now shifting. Now we are not just obsessed with assessment of learning, we are talking about assessment for learning. All of you who are preparing for like uh, uh, American exams and PLAB, 
uh, you don't read textbooks. You read those books with questions and answers. There are so many around that. So they are using assessment for learning. So I think in, in the training of surgical residents, this is the mode which is most. So it is throughout the course. It identifies gaps and improves learning. And then it approaches that are specific to the student needs. The gaps that he or she has and the timing and the requirement and the need. So uh, I, I'll go through one by one. Uh, the first area is the cognitive domain, the knowledge thing. The best thing about it is now is this computerized adaptive testing, which so many international forums which charge us, they are doing this. Lecturio and I mean, there's so many now. They are, they are making money because they teach you through questions. What happens is this has a big pool of question bank categorized according to subject, categorized according to difficulty level, categorized according to importance and categorized according to the level of uh, Bloom's level, whether it is simple, straightforward or it is a problem solving question. They, they have this big bank there and then it throws you a question, selects a question and throws it. And then you re administer and you, there you respond to it and it scores. And then, then it analyzes it and gives you the next question. And that question depends upon your response of the previous question. See, let me show you. Starts with a moderate difficulty question. And if you answer it, it gives you a little higher. Or it starts with a very simple question about uh, straightforward, about your basics, anatomy, physiology. And then it builds upon it. Like if first it shows you an ECG, what is an ECG? Okay. And then it goes on, it shows like uh, ischemic patterns, arrhythmias, it builds up on that. And it adjusts itself. If you are unable to answer, it comes a little lower. That is how experienced uh, people took our vivas when we were students. So it brings you to the speed swap spot of difficulty. What is that? We learn or we go best when we are optimally challenged. If we get too difficult thing, we get frustrated. And if we get the same easy stuff, we get bored. So it maintains us in that optimum flow. So the learner keeps on learning, keeps on learning and goes on and learns more in a shorter time. Then you see, if you, it selects your test questions dependent upon your previous response, appropriate level of feedback. It increases students' motivation. It keeps them along. And then uh, identifies the knowledge gaps, provides you material to fill that gap. Okay? It doesn't say come after six months or a year for the next test. It tells you, it gives you reading material. So uh, it tailors difficulty levels, suggests learning resources and practice questions data. Okay. Yes, sir, if either in here, now it is being targeted, it is used, being used for automated assay scorings. It is quizzing, gamification, surgical diagnostic assessment, interpretation, prescription writing, emergency response, even fitness for practice. Next one, the other area which we are so, so uh, caring about is the psychomotor, the skill part. Let's see. Let me give you a history. Uh, we, Vasebi, uh, CPSP, part two, your residents, and they have put in DOPS this now as your assessment. What is direct observation of procedural skills? Aap, you invite your senior and you select a skill and they and you request them to uh, judge you on that give you a feedback on that so, okay fine assalamualaikum and then there is a more refined form of it osats it is a series of stations a series of stations which on which you move on it is 6 to 8 stations it is like a multi station time bound 6 to 8 procedures bench models may there are people, if you require assistance, there is a nurse or someone assisting you. 
15 minutes for each and the candidates move from station to station and each station is marked by a trained observer so it can be the same procedure increasingly you put it into bits and pieces or random which you you choose so this is more objective and uh, uh, and the people who are watching them they mark them either by a checklist or a holistic rating scale done okay we are with that we have dops and we have osats which are observed stations skill stations then came uh, it was in the last century they, then came mistels we never know it was mistels it was a uh, magill in any made system of training uh, we were given we were all trained on it uh, to start with there were pegs peg transfer pattern cutting this is what we call those uh, endo trainers that we have so we all went through it and uh, placement of ligating loops extra corporeal and intracorporeal knotting ye endo trainer we have this at shalamar it is present in your skill lab so this is how it all started we started and we scored them according to times okay time taken i was never good at it to start with anyway uh, then people created and this has an excellent reliability test retest and interrater reliability look how amazing it was so this was over starter my starter as well uh, then round 2005 2006 this came up imperial college surgical ass assessment what they did was they put in electrodes on the surgeon's hand and they moved they checked the movement so it was like kinematic kitni erratic movements hain kitni focus movements hain so uh, so they would put those sensors on the hand and ask them to way put it these now this guy is doing a lumbar puncture theek hai na they put in electrodes ye tare ja rahi hai under the gloves and they would score it now that data would tell you whether this person is a novice is an intermediate or an expert so this was this was around 2005 2006 and then came the video based assessments cameras uh, improve hue so this this uh, this trainee she is performing a uh, fluoroscopically guided articular fracture surgery she is at this camera aur ye is camera ka ye view hai this was recorded this was recorded and an observer at his time your his senior maybe in the evening uh, wo baith ke usko observe kar leta just like this abhi to ye apni family ki photos dekh raha hai farag hoga to he would look at her and would rate it so there were problems because uh, time consuming uh, little subjective because it was this focus when you work in a theater it is an whole environment theek hai na एनस्थीजिया वाले अपनी बातें कर रहे हैं समथिंग हैपनिंग इट जस्ट गिव यू ए फोकस्ड पिक्चर बट दिस नॉट बैड नॉट बैड सो बट दे सेड के देर वॉज लिटल इनकन्सिस्टेंसी बिटवीन द रेटर्स इन दिस सो वी आर इवॉल्विंग नाउ वी आर वी रिकॉर्डिंग वीडियोज एंड दे आर बींग असेस बाय ट्रेन ऑब्जर्वर्स नेक्स्ट केम so this is interesting next came the this this term came wops dops as you all know direct observation of procedural skills which cps cpsp has administered uh, for your training now wops hai ye uh, lela riasian in tehran she did wops is just like now this instead of a direct observation of procedural skills we have started doing video observation of procedural skills okay इसने ये फेको मल्सिकेशन पे स्टडी है इसकी एनी वे नाउ सम सीरियस ए आई मशीन लर्निंग मशीन लर्न हाउ टू थिंक एंड एक्ट लाइक ह्यूम एंड इसकी जो ब्रांच है विच इज नाउ इज डीप लर्निंग विच इज नाउ हेल्पिंग अस नाउ रियली हेल्पिंग अस दे आर एल्गोरिजम्स they are trying to mimic the human brain how we think and it's not very simple it's just not not a stimulus and a response there are complex arrays of neuronal networks which are involved so it does like that okay may to be brief this is how it works you start with this there are you give that machine 
you tell that you tell that machine these are the surgical task knotting stitching cutting whatever whatever the procedure you give it and you this is either in the bench top task or they are actual procedures lumbar puncture stitching theek hai na and then with it you give them the environment the either this is a bench shop like experimental lab jo skills lab is it a simulation or it is a real life surgery this data you feed into this source and this is two types of data previously it was only kinematic data those electrodes and movements now it is in the form of videos as well this was a great big breakthrough about 5 years back and then this data is machine learning algorithms hai latest usme jisne ye video ko kerna hai wo artificial neural networks hai they started with this uh, svm hmm it is all latin to me but artificial neural 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 networks is the latest upgraded version of deep learning this now you have a trained model with all this input tasks environment this sort of sources and you feed it in now this is ready to assess and then you give it a novel ab wo mujhe kehte hain khalid aao zara karke dikhao noting intracorporeal i do it it analyzes it and does assessment khalid you are a failure okay improve your hand movements theek hai na no tumne note ulti laga di कॉलेसिसमी करते हुए तुमने गॉल ब्लेडर रिमूव करते हुए तुमने अभी 50 एम ब्लड वारिस साहब ने जो आपका सेम्स में बना हुआ मैं देखने गया था वहां सिमुलेटर वो सिमुलेटर में जो डूइंग डिसेक्टिंग दी गॉल ब्लेडर तो 50 एम ब्लड कम ऑन यू कैन डू बेटर सो इट स्टार्टेड गिविंग फीडबैक सो दिस इज हाउ इट एस नाउ इसमें बड़ा स्पेशल है हम ये जॉन हॉपकिस में वट दे डिड वॉज five surgeons as uh, sorry eight surgeons did three simple things knotting suturing and uh, inserting needle did it five times each eight surgeons doing it five times each aur wo data unhone record kiya aur uske baad unhone irb ki approval se unhone usko uh, disseminate kar diya aur is pe ab tak 62 studies aa chuki hain that was the basic skill a benchmark a standard ke how this knotting and this to ye isme bhi wohi kinematic data hand movements ka video ka data aur iske andar unhone thodi si jo annotation saath hai jo uske environment ki wo bhi dali aur summative score nikale aur formative feedback nikala benefits kya hai objective and quantitative assessment ठीक है इंप्रूव ट्रेनिंग एफिशिएंसी और वाइडर एप्लीकेशन आहिस्ता आहिस्ता लेकिन लिमिटेशन भी हैं डाटा पे डिपेंड करता है डाटा कितना है आपने उसको कितनी इंफॉर्मेशन फीड की है उस डीप लर्निंग मॉडल को कितने नंबर उसकी जिस तरह उन्होंने जॉन हॉपकिंस वालों ने सिंपल uh, प्रोसीजर्स के लिए पांच सर्जन्स आठ सर्जन्स को एक ही सूचर सेम थिंग पांच बार करके फाइव टाइम्स करके उसको फीड किया तो उसने उसमें से देखा कि व्हाट इज द बेस्ट व्हाट इज आइडियल तो लेकिन एक एक और चीज है जर्मे व्हेन यू आर डूइंग एन ओपन सर्जरी राइट है मी कलेक्ट मी करते हुए इफ यू आर असिस्टिंग एंड समवन जो आपका सीनियर आपको बता रहा है और कर रहा है यू गेट ए फेयर आइडिया मे बी हाउ टू डू ए लेफ्ट है मी कोलेक्ट मी but there certain differences but if you राइट राइट है मी कोलेक्ट मी ऑन ए ट्रेनर You cannot reflect on a left hemicolectomy. So, is me, wo jo experience hai, it is very narrowed down. So, ek limitation hai. Ek to aapka data set kya hai? Aapne benchmark kahan set kiya hai? Or I'm so worried. I'm not worried that machines will take over one day. ठीक है ना? वो जो Terminator theory. I am more worried that the machines are learning from us. Okay. Uh, <laughs> सो so, अब इसकी जो मेराज है हाई फर्डेलिटी वी आर वर्चुअल रियलिटी अब यू कैन लर्न रिहर्स एंड रिव्यू दी स्टेप्स ऑफ ए सर्जिकल प्रोसीजर इंडिपेंडेंटली एंड रिलेटिवली रिस्क फ्री और बिल्ट इन इंस्ट्रक्शनल गाइड्स 
and real time feedback it keeps on teaching you telling you till you tell you become good enough proficient lekin isme jo latest hai abhi tak bhi there is little problem it has if it is not recommended it should be used for assessment we can use simulators for assessment because they say that in order in a on a simulator even a novice can go on and learn mera heart rate to theek hai but in order to go on a virtual reality model you should be come as come halfway through the learning curve of minimal and massive surgery so they, you got to have a reasonable amount of uh, understanding and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, to work on a uh, simulator then you go on to vr you can't go and it's still not recommended that vr should be used for assessments okay final part so we talked about cognition we talked about uh, uh, the uh, skills now about the behaviors effective we have this virtual patient cases they are amazing they are amazing and there are millions of them there are so many people who are working on this and you ye aapko be bas kar dete agar aap na ho and they keep on arguing till you learn that thing that you have to theek hai na so isko hum use kis tarah kar rahe hain positive attitudes ke liye ya use ho raha hai or they are being used for communication and decision making skills and handle complex ethical situations or ek aur interesting cheez you can feed in those ethical situations they are you see the ethical challenges that you face here are different than in ireland where i worked for a while so those challenges some are general but some are very specific you can feed in a any incident that occurred in your ward or in your uh, hospital and that led to a lot of that had very deep ethical concerns and you feed that data to that and that one that's in, that one uh, that scenario will develop for that so do you can teach it so any we don't need to make same make the same mistakes again and then uh, crisis management decision making empathy and professionalism so there are all scenarios made by very wise people and they are there to challenge you and uh, make you to learn those things which may you take for a long while and then teamwork and leadership general uh, sorry generally the surgeons lack this because the lone west uh, you know <laughs> model of person and then adverse events and the data sets yeah that's what i said you can put in your unique data sets into that artificial intelligence and that will create those scenarios and uh, someone will come up and talk to your resident finally the last part 360 degree evaluations which were sari duniya mein hoti thi and they were just put in a uh, locker room or uh, nobody was there to evaluate them you you give this data to artificial intelligence it will go through everywhere and rate you this is the one of the amazing thing the holistic picture what person you are summing up enhancing the efficiency and effectiveness of surgical training focus on more complex and creative tasks you you know in ireland if you do the basic laparoscopic course your consultant would let you to come as a first assistant and once you do that uh, advanced co laparoscopic course one evening he would say okay guy go ahead appendix aa gayi do it you see that is how so we give these simpler tasks which you have to learn uh, to the artificial intelligence and allowing adequate time for other activities aapki to other activities are very important to the new generation hamare liye to itni important nahi thi and but wohi baat more systematic analysis large data sets and over reliance nahi kar sakte still humans rule thank you very much this was a great presentation alex uh, now the question